Hello, and welcome back to another day in the arena. It's me, it's CGB, and the color challenge is moving on. It is Covert Go Blue Week. That will sound more interesting when I say Covert Go Green or Covert Go Red Week. It just sounds lame when I say it about myself, but uh, it is the blue color challenge. So we're trying to make all kinds of decks from the color, just the color blue this week. One of the favorite strategies in blue is mill, and people often want me to build a mill deck. And don't worry, I also have a turbo mill deck. Maybe we'll get to show it this week, where all we do is cast cards like thought, what is it, thought collapse, and you didn't say please, right, this card. People love this these cards for some reason, but counter spells aren't that great right now, and I wanted to make a mill deck in a different style and a different direction. So this is Super Mill. It is a Super Friends mill deck with 15 Planeswalkers. And the Planeswalkers, of course, can draw the fire from the opponent and accumulate value every turn, and they are a force to be reckoned with. We also get to play Interplanar Bacon, which lets me gain life whenever I play a Planeswalker, which is very important against the aggressive matchups. So uh, it adds a key element to the deck that blue decks don't normally have, which is life gain. Other than that, we're putting bodies between our opponent's creatures and our Planeswalkers in the form of Merfolk Secret Keeper, Overwhelmed Apprentice, Wall of Lost Thoughts. We're milling them while we play Planeswalkers with Drowned Secrets. Sahili is pumping out Chump Blockers. That's really all she's here to do. But then Jace and Ashiok carry the milling, uh, the milling load, so to speak. While also we have Unsummon and Opt to trigger Sahili at instant speed, make more blockers, and help us find the right cards in our deck, mill the opponent with Drowned Secrets, and often we end up unsummoning our own Secret Keeper for more triggers. So it's a different kind of mill deck. It plays a different style of game. I find it pretty fun. Hopefully you will find it fun as well. So let's dive right in and let the nonsense begin. <laughs> opt it is. Maybe these ops will find us lands. Maybe they won't. Maybe they will. <laughs> I I can't resist weird hands, can I? It's it's one of my flaws. If you can call it that. Let's hit them with the wall of lost thoughts and send a message. Oh, your simic flash. That's not good. That's probably very strong against us. I thought we might be up against Golos, which I never seem to play when I want to. So what do you think? Just straight up slam it? They'll definitely have like Quench or something, won't they? Won't they? They always do, right? Still, I don't know how this is ever going to resolve unless we just go for it. And as far as things they can counter, this one doesn't have a board effect like a Sahili does. Or a uh, battlefield, like Narset kind of has a board effect. Okay, again. That resolves. Let's get busy up in here. Sure, once upon a time. Okay. Um, let's see, we're not playing counters, we're not playing sweepers, we're all about battlefield traction, so that's gonna make this whole experience really rough, but look at all the spells! Their deck is going to be all lands by the end of this, look at that, no lands out of those cards we've milled. Drown Secrets, let's go for that, see if the opponent would like to counter it. Obviously a Frilled Mystic is a pretty good card, nope. Let's hit your deck with the Ashiok. Ooh, there go the Frilds. Our opponent's down to 36. And we'll pass the turn. When the opponent ambushes us, we'll unsummon it. Go away. And another Mystic. This is so wacky. This is so crazy. All right. Scryland. It, go ahead, put it on top. See what happens. See what happens to the card you put on top. That's, yeah, there you go. To the bottom. I guess it doesn't matter too much. What do you guys think? We try to resolve the Sahili, right? That way at least we can make some wolf blockers. If the opponent counters it, well, they went for the, they went for Wolfie Boy instead. Will you 
All right, down to 27. If the opponent attacks, I think we're chumping away with our wall because we can start making more blockers. But we could also save our wall because it can indefinitely block a token or two. So letting Sahili go to one isn't prob probably is a good idea. Because this can at least hold a wolf indefinitely. Do we play a Jace? It makes a single 1-1. One, one. The opponent hasn't had a counter, or at least they haven't played a counter in a few turns. Let's push it. Let's do it. Let's go. Let's go the distance. I will find my way. I can go the distance. I'll be there someday. Somehow I'll be strong. I know every mile will be worth my while. I can go most anywhere till I find where I belong. I know, somebody in comments said no more singing. I guess, I guess I just lost a sub. More wolf. Yeah, I had a feeling it was going to get out of hand. What do we got you at, 17? We'll need some good luck here to finish the job. Let's see how the opponent chooses to attack. Hmm, they're spreading out the uh, the offense. I get to save something of my choice. They're attacking face. I'm definitely taking that. I get to save two Planeswalkers. So what represents the most cards? The Sahili can protect other things if I save her. So I think I should keep her around. But I mean, honestly, I'm never going to catch up to these. The problem is I might just face a lethal attack. Who are you attacking? Sahili. So I have to stay alive. I think I'll keep the Jace and the Sahili. You're the Jace. You're the Jace. You're the Ashiok. You're the Jace. I don't agree with those attacks. I think the opponent could have done that better. But it's not for me to decide. Wolves! So many wolves. All right. We'll start here. Need a little luck to close this game. We can't just be bricking and drawing nothing, darn it. That is a card. That is a good one. That can block. The opponent not playing an essence capture just yet. Mills another two. They're at 13. They're at 11. Wow. Wow. But you, we don't have time for. You, I can make time for. You think the opponent's sitting on a negate? Let's make a token and mill the opponent some more. It's getting really close to lethal, though. Maybe a quench? I do feel like they've been without counter magic for a little while. Let's go for it. Let's go for the vic- let's go for the victory. What do you got? Oh, they're making me sweat. Ashiok is in! I mean, they ain't dead. We're a land short and an op short. Our opponent's at three. And we've got blockers. Can we make it out of this? I'm at your mercy. What have you got? Let's see, I could go block, 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 take 16, or no, take 8. It's fine. This is fine. <laughs> You're on NCEP. Do they have the unsummons? Do they have the brazen borrowers? Can they find the lethal? Or are they going to rope me to death? <laughs> Power up the rope. Tense music happens. Unsummon. What else you got? Unsummon. Oh no. Four, 12, plus five, 17. It's lethal. It's lethal. They don't even have to play the third one, but they're going to because why not? 
Why not? And now they just have to attack correctly with two cards left in their deck. We we couldn't do it, Honk. We couldn't do it. We couldn't defeat them. Too strong. Too powerful. Yeah. Let's give it a shot. We got Secret Keeper and Drown Secrets. We could hold the Secret Keeper to go with the Drown Secrets, but then we'd have nothing nothing protecting our our other stuff, and it is a cheap play. I don't know. We'll have to see. I don't know if I just straight up Secret Keeper them on turn one when I have a Drown Secrets. That getting the extra cards, I mean, we saw last game came down to two cards. Last game came down to two cards, so let's pass. Well, it's a planes. Does the planes come with a creature? They usually do. Tension rising. It's a healer's hawk. All right. Seeing double bacon is exciting, but let's see what the opponent gets up to to start their show. Reading up on the drown secrets. Examining the hand, playing the planes, attacking for one and a lifelink, and passing the turn. I do what I can to spice it up, you guys. The common, the the play-by-play -play is all I got. All right, Drown Secrets. What else is in your deck? We get a look at a swamp and a plains. So good old lifelink. Let's use Narset and let's find a Sahili. I think, even though the Healer's Hawk flies, we're going to need blockers for other things. We could keep the Ashiok, but I just don't think that's right. I think we're going to want these ground creatures. Lovely stained glass Narset. Hello, Orzov Gilgate. Hello, Dawn of Hope. <laughs> I, I'm very happy to see you, I must say. I really, really like it when my opponents play Dawn of Hope most of the time. And they and going face, ignoring Narset. Bold move. So there's nothing there's nothing for the 1-1 one -one to block yet, so I don't need to play it this turn, and especially if the opponent's going to keep hawking about. Let's play the Jace. Also, I could keep Narset on the field until the opponent realizes it shuts off their life gain. So I think keeping this at three is smart because if the opponent attacks it with the Hawk here, as opposed to if it's at one, they kill it, uh, then they can't draw a card with their Dawn of Hope if that's their wish. Although that even that doesn't sound terrible to me if they want to spend two mana drawing cards while I'm getting ahead with my super friends. Let's see what they do. Oath of Kaya. Sure. That's a punishment, I suppose. I have reached my limit. How about Jace? Do you attack a Jace? Do you dare attack JC boy? Nah. Nah, who cares about Jace? Now what? We still don't have anything to block with the Sahili, making me look like a fool for earlier. That's okay. I can take it. I don't think I'll ever have something to really block the Hawk. Unsummoning it's going to be the only interaction it receives, so I have to accept that it will get to attack my Planeswalkers. Let's start with the Jace draw. It's a matter of Two lifelink critters gone. Another land found. We can definitely go pr start going pretty ham at their library. And I think that makes sense. Although they did use an Oath of Kai on the Narset, let's put another Narset down and see what they do. I should have, darn it, I should have used both Bacons. Tap my mana wrong. Hmm, or Narset. Charming. Venture deeper, my friends. Oh yeah, Threadhorde Invasion, huh? Yep, good old life cats. They never die in the arena. They're gonna live forever. I guess I can't double bacon, can I? Let's see, I could activate one, activate one, yeah. There's no way to do it. When you have two of them, you can't use both to play the same Narset. 
I guess I could tap one for colorless, one for it's different colors. Yeah, that doesn't work either. It's kind of tricky. Kind of tricky bacon. But that life gain is worth it. You need it. There are multiple matchups where you need it. If you have double bacon, you're usually doing okay against an aggressive deck. So if you have to play one less spell, it's not the end of the world. Opponent with the Prison Realm. They have taken the Jace. They are debating what to do with the Healer's Hawk. Now let's see if they try to draw the card with Dawn of Hope. Place your bets. Contain your rage. Place your bets. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <sighs> All right, I think we'll play out the other planeswalkers now and just have the full the full team the the team of friends assembling here. Opponent's at 33 cards in deck, so we're not emptying that load just yet, but we're going to work on it. All right, Gideon. Ooh. Got some strong, something strong in there. Fire all that away. I don't feel like I need another Narset card, so we'll just pass with this preventing draw from Dawn of Hope. Although, maybe I should have used it because, quite honestly, I don't want to see the opponent try to draw a card again and fail. I said card again. The things I do for entertainment things I try to do for your entertainment. Breaking in a song or something like that seems almost called for in a moment like this. Some people wait a lifetime for a moment like this. No. <laughs> There's the Bloodthirsty Aerialist. And what next? The Hawk goes face. Don't draw the card. Don't try to draw the card. Please don't. We're not learning. We're not learning here. Poor user experience occurring. All right. Let's 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 see if we can empty this library. Narset, go find me something. Uh, another Jace. Yeah. Just laying the Planeswalker beating on extra thick. Can I do it this time? If I do like this, wait a minute. So if I go colorless. And then I go activate this. Two mana of different colors, blue, white. But we can use one of the blues and one of the whites to satisfy Jace requirement. We can leave up three mana in blue, blue, blue. So see, we're making use of the time. We're learning something. Things are happening. The syllabic cabell haunts hitting the graveyard. Jace is milling it up. Then we what? I guess we'll venture deeper. And we'll play an 04. Although all these flyers kind of take away from it. And we can Ashiok you now. Down to eight cards in the library. And your turn. With an unsummon available if we need it. But yeah, at 28 to 28, we're in. This, this game is on lock, I think. I'm 99% sure. Only the client crashing itself can get me now. Can get me now. Here, birdie birdies. Dreadhorde Invasion. Yep. I will say if this player built their own deck and, you know... When you're new to the arena and you're new to magic, when building your own deck can be very hard. And if they put this together themselves, then kudos. It actually has a lot of cards that work together. I don't see weird random stuff going on. Looks like a very legit deck. I think they're a new player based on the amount of time taken on some of the decisions, the things going on with the NAR set on the field. But uh, their deck building skill is definitely um, on par with what they're going to... It's going to serve them well in their magical future, I believe. This is difficult 
Ashiok died. Uh-huh. So, Aerialist and Healerzok probably going to point somewhere. We'll see what they do. They attack Sahili. I think I'll just save this to make sure I can mill my opponent out. I can bounce my own Secret Keeper and then play the Venture Deeper, and that will be game. So there's no reason. And they've changed their mind. Attacking the Jace makes more sense as it's a more immediate threat because of the plus mills. So that's fine. Bloodthirsty Aerialist grows one more time. Second Drowned Secrets, though, is more than enough to put it away. Unsummon the Secret Keeper, just to show that this little trick that will probably come up a time or two. But just in case it doesn't come up in a future game, I can show it right now. Venture Deeper. Hit him in the deck. And emptied. Your turn. Okay. I said only the client could get me. Is the client getting me? This doesn't look right. Okay. Okay. We got there. Boom. <laughs> hit, this will hit the deck very hard and make a lot of 04 blockers. Will that be good against our against this opponent? I have no idea. But we're going to find out. Because how could I turn down this hand? There are 16 cards, possibly 20, in the graveyard already. The opponent just doesn't know it yet. All right. Once upon a time, there was a... Golos, the Tireless Pilgrim. Of course there was. Okay, if we draw a land, life is great. If we actually just rip a land for the Ashiok, that can really get this game going. Unfortunately, we're on the draw. If we were on the play, it would be a lot better. The opponent might actually be able to resolve this Golos before we even get a chance to draw that land. Okay, we have to play this because we have to try to find the land. Come on. Oh, crying out loud. Bottom two cards that are actually amazing in the matchup because, oh, I'm mad. All right. Top four. Got to get a look at this land. We got to find it. If we draw it, things could be great. If we don't draw it, because this uh, shuts down off the search ability of Golos. So that's what we're going for here. Our opponent checks their top five with Once Upon a Time. What do they find? Temple Garden. Okay, come on. Come on. Yes! Yes! Get those cards out of here. You're down to 35. This will shut down, crucially shut down Circuitous Root and Golos the Tireless Pilgrim. And it will give us needed time. Yep, you you do that. You do that. <laughs> oh, oh yes! Yeah, baby! Straight up scoop. Beating Golos feels too good, man. Feels too good. You can tell what gets me up in the morning. It's a drowned secret draw, that's for sure. It is on the draw, which is a bit scary, but we'll give it a shot. We'll give you a try. The real question is whether or not I play, I think I play the drowned secrets first. Yeah, we've kind of been through this. We want to play drowned secrets, then play the secret keepers. Anyway, our opponent was being nice. Let's try being nice back. It looks like they want to play Grixis with me. All right, let's do it. Let's see what you got. Oh, nice. Yeah, Grixis has an enchantment problem. Typically. We'll see what's up with this build. This, ooh, 
Wait, what? Wait, what? Are you Golos too? Where's Ashiok? Get in here, Ashiok. My opponent's searching their library and you're doing nothing about it. Not acceptable. Narset. It's good against the Krasis, but I don't think we play Narset here. I think we get our double drown on. On to flourishing. Opponent is impressed that we are going ham. Show me what you got. Good game. Okay. Kenrith in the bin. What do you what have you got? No field of dead spotted just yet. This is obviously some pile of five color nonsense. Threat make a four four. I'm starting to feel okay. <laughs> Things are getting fine in here. Um, what to do? I think we'll play the Sahili and the Merfolk Secret Keeper to make a 1-1. This has trample, unfortunately, but the sooner we get this out, the more 1-1s we can make. And the more life we can gain. Yeah, the opponent's build is something feisty. I don't know quite what to make of it, but it's definitely not fast. And it's giving us a chance here. It's... it's... Singleton? <laughs> Five color mythics? Ha. I don't know, but we've got them half dead. They're down to 30. No, not my secret keeper. Now you get to beat up my things. Down to one. We do have the wall of lost thoughts. Which, if it survived, could serve, could pass us like one turn, but we could also go for the Narset and try to hit another spell. I think that the play is just get Jace down though, because Jace goes up to five, which is really hard for the four, like it lines up well against the four four. Our opponent might be playing a Beanstalk Giant, so we're gonna want our one ones to block that. I don't know if that's realistic. The opponent seems to really like removal. Well, we drew a land. Let's hope Sahili can live. I mean, the opponent, let's hope they attack somewhere else. I just, wow, what a deck. Dr. Bumcheeks would love this deck. And where's your life? 23. Yeah, I can't save Sahili now. That's too bad. She died. Time to come up with a new plan. Indeed. Time to come up with a new plan. There's a Grazer, the opponent not going for the Beanstalk Giant, which surprises me. So do they have something bigger and stronger in hand that they're building up to? Guild Mages Forum. One man of any color. If it's spent on a multicolored creature spell, it enters the battlefield with a plus one, plus one counter. Okay. Enemy Dazzle, and you blew up my land. And you give me an oops. You are a feisty one. Let's see what we draw. Unsummon is great against the 4-4 token. Where have you been all my life? Let's play the Narset. Trigger the Drowned Secrets. Yeah, get that Teferi out of here. Opponent hitting the good game button again. Alright. 17, your turn. Save this till the last minute, and then Sahili to make some blockers for the Beanstalk. It doesn't have Trample, no matter how big it gets. <laughs> Bolus out of here. Nissa out of here. And finally, the Scoops. Don't look now, but we're going for win number four with our deck. That's exciting. His hand isn't great. But the Overwhelmed Apprentice might help us hit our land so that Jace can come online so that whatever happens after that happens. So let's do it. I know, too much homework. Two lands gone for the opponent. We have an opt. I guess that can help me find another land. But it doesn't help me curve very well. 
I know I want to draw this land. Next turn I can play Secret Keeper. Turn after that, drawing an Opt can find me either another 2-drop, but there's so many 3-drops in the deck, I think I'd just prefer to draw either another land or a 3-drop. See, yeah, Opt would take me off curve. If I drew it next turn, I know I'd just draw the castle, which isn't very good. So, yeah, I think that's the right setup. It's not a good use of the Opt, anyway. Once upon a time, there was a Pelt Collector. A turn one Pelt Collector. It's freaking Gruel deck, so strong. Just kills me. Just murdoys me. But this time, we're going to venture deeper. Send some of your stuff away and make an 0-4 on turn two to get the blocks. Next turn, we might use the Unsummon on the Apprentice to make sure we get to play Jace on time. We'll see. I mean, we probably need it against something this deck does. I'm just not sure what yet. Okay, we drew the land. No need to. Now we're probably unsummoning the Questing Beast or whatever the hell the opponent plays. <laughs> so we can play a Jace. No Questing Beast. I'm a lucky man. Shock makes me less lucky. Do I want to unsummon this? I can also unsummon the Pelt Collector, and the opponent can't replay it here. They can't attack with both of these. I think we just let that go. I could also unsummon the Paradise Druid, since the opponent appears to be having some mana issues. Yeah, I block. Yeah, I think that's the play. Just set them back. Since they missed a land drop. Because they wouldn't have tapped that Paradise Druid if they didn't have to. Ooh, they weren't going to draw the land either. Feeling bad. But let's see what happens. Did I cut them to a land? I did. <sighs> the mill giveth and the mill taketh away. Interesting. He went for the 4-4. Four, four. That means I can still block the collector. I thought we would have done a hasty 3-3. Three, three. Keep it coming, Jace. We've got a long way to go. 38. Hmm. I think I can lead with an opt here and see what we see. I'd want to play a Drown Secret sooner if I find one. Ta-da. We can hold this, I think. We might draw another Drown Secrets to go with this. Either way, we end up with an 0-4, but this is two spells. This is one. So if we draw a second Drown Secrets, we get max mill triggers. Oh, yeah. Get him. Uh, Embercleave. We see one in the graveyard. If the opponent has another one, I'm getting my face smashed. Gives plus one, plus one, double strike, and trample. Can be played at instant speed, cost one less for each attacking creature, and I think the opponent just went face, and that sends a message to me. Is it the Embercleave? It is! Would an unsummon have been nice? Double. Uh, strike. Wrap. So we need to draw another unsummon. Bacon. Well, we do need to get that on the battlefield, but it's not going to do me much good yet. Am I dead next turn? I can put out a lot of toughness. At least I've got that going for me. 23. Venture deeper. It's eight more cards here. Just keep it coming, baby. The opponent says good game. They must have something. You got a way to push through for max damage. I've got you at 14. But I'm pretty much out of ammo. Ambush, sure. That's 10 now. Do you have another one? If you have a shock, that's lethal too, of course. But I'm not playing around it. <laughs> They've got a collision colossus. Yeah, nice combo. 
Way to put all the pieces together. Pretty good to have all that in your hand when you need it. Not a lot I could do. An unsummon, I guess. What did I unsummon? I unsummoned a Paradise Druid earlier. If I could take it back, I would have held my unsummon, and maybe that game would have been different. Hold your unsummons against Gruul. That's what we can learn from this. It's the rubber game. If we win this one, we break even. If we don't, we fail. And look at this hand. What a nightmare. It's such a good hand. If either of these were an island, it would be brilliant. And we're on the play. Mulliganing is so bad with this deck. Like, unbelievably bad. And two Bacons, if we're against Mono Red, is like our best hope. Let's do it. We'll draw the island. It's right on top of the deck. I can feel it. I told you. I told you. You doubted me. I knew the whole time. Gruel again. Apparently this is the weapon of choice now. I've faced this about six times today. That's probably an exaggeration. Bias usually ups it by at least one. I can remember for certain at least five games. Hmm. Hmm. Pretty awkward that I still need to draw another island here, otherwise I'm going to be very limited in what I can play. But if I have another wall, I can defend Narset better, but I'm never going to be able to defend Narset better. That's part of the problem. Um, the, the deck is never going to stop playing hasty threats. All right, we get an Ashiok. We get an Ashiok. I told you. I mean, just, yeah, you've, you've, you've seen it with your own eyes. One, two, three. Easy money. Every time. But Narset can draw some damage. I don't think we have a prayer, but we will give it a shot. These are three power creatures. These are four toughness blockers. I need to find a land, though. I think it's a little bit too optimistic to opt for it. Let's just try to hold off for it. These bacons are hurting me. Oh yeah, get that ember cleave out of here. Jesus. Jesus, you guys. That is rough. That is not good. But we may as well play it. Give me that life. That questing beast is a problem. We have this unsummon though. So let's see what the opponent does here. Uh huh. More hasty creatures, yay! Why would you attack the Ashiok? All right. Um, block and block. So do I bounce the Questing Beast? I could just let the Ashiok die and bounce something else, but then it's just so easily replayed that's not even right. Um, we can opt. Keeping the Ashiok alive is probably not going to win me this game. I think I need the opt. I need another island. And I think the opponent will go for some combat trick. This has summoning sickness? Okay. Or not summoning sickness. This has hexproof. I can't unsummon it. I could unsummon my own wall, but that doesn't achieve enough. Need to draw another Planeswalker. Okay. Oh man, I can't. It doesn't work this way. Christ. Stupid. 
I can't play the Jace and leave a blue open. It doesn't work that way because you can't use the mana from the bacon to activate another bacon. My heart is breaking. My heart is absolutely breaking, team. What do I need? I guess I need a Sahili. You won't do. Nope. You won't do. Ugh. All right. Time to take what's coming to me. Time to take what's coming to me. We block here and here because these have trample. I take 10. So that's not good enough. So I have to block like here. Take 9. There is the Planeswalker I needed last turn. But yeah, got crushed by Bacon. I guess if you need to go out, if you have to go out, my friends, go out with Bacon. See if the opponent gets cocky and attacks me with just one creature. Yeah, that's probably a good choice. Ah. Uh. It stings, it stings. Good effort, team. But Mill is, well, Mill ain't good. <laughs> let, let, let's, let's look back at the deck. So, um, I like going for some kind of a Super Friends deck. Obviously, Interplanar Beacon really got me um, in that game. But it also saved me in a lot of spots and it makes it makes the red matchup. It like drawing multiples of these is the only hope you really have. Um, so I wouldn't change it. I don't think I don't. I think the deck's kind of stuck as is 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 when you're confined to one color. I think this is what you run. Anyway. I hope some of you got some enjoyment out of the mill deck for sure. The games where I lose with Mill are the most painful games of Magic I ever play, and they make me never, ever want to do it again. But the games you win feel, like, rewarding, like climbing an absolute mountain. So, uh, regrets? I have a few, but too few to mention. I hope you enjoyed this, and get ready for more Mono Blue Color Challenge coming up tomorrow. Thank you for watching this video. As always, I will see you in the next video. Goodbye.